Morning, guys. Uh, last week, we were talking a lot about poetry and what elements poetry has. We talked about the fist list, and we talked about how poetry has rhymes sometimes. Sometimes poetry has rhythm. Poetry has beats. Poetry has lines. And poetry has stanzas. And I shared a different, couple different examples of poems with you. Um, and I said to you that my very favorite poet was Shel Silverstein. So today I'm going to read you a book of his that's actually a poem, and it's a special kind of poem. It's called Couplet Poetry, and there's a lot of rhyming words in here. Uh, I'm going to read it with you. I want you to be on the lookout for the rhyme and the rhythm while I'm reading, and I'm going to stop it at a couple different points, and I'm going to ask you to use your iPads to mark up the poem and show me what words are rhyming in this story. I'm going to ask you to show me by tapping your hands like we did last week on the um, table to show me that you can hear the rhythm of the story. And I think by the end of it, you're gonna be able to be uh, reading the story with me because it repeats a lot too, which is fun. So here is one of my very favorite Shel Silverstein books, A Giraffe and a Half. If you had a giraffe and he stretched another half, you would have a giraffe and a half. If he put on a hat and inside lived a rat, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat. If you dressed him in a suit and he looked very cute, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit. If you glued a rose to the tip of his nose, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose. If a bumbly old bee stung him right on the knee, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee. If he put on a shoe and then stepped in some glue, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe. If you gave him a flute and he played tootie toot, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute. If he used a chair to comb his hair, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair. If he tripped on a snake who was eating some cake, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake. If he found an old trunk and inside was a skunk, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk. Well, this is one of my favorite pages. If he met a fat dragon who sat in a wagon, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon. If he jumped on a bike and rode over a spike, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike. If a blubbery whale got a hold of his tail, you would have 
A giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike and a whale on his tail. If he fell in a hole that was dug by a mole, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike and a whale on his tail in a hole with a mole. Okay. I am going to stop right there for a minute. I'm going to give you the last page of the book right here. And I'm going to ask you to look at the screenshot, use your explain everything, and I want you to actually highlight with your finger the words that rhyme in this poem. The words that rhyme in this poem are giving the poem the rhythm and the beats. It's what makes you want to tap your toes while I'm reading. So go ahead, take a second, and mark that up. Okay, now that you've finished, go ahead. We're going to hit play again. I'm going to finish reading you the rest of the poem, and then I'm going to give you some instructions about what we're going to be doing the rest of the week. But if you brought him a pole to climb out of the hole, and the whale left his tail and went off for the mail, and he gave the spiked bike to a scout on a hike, and he left the fat dragon, cause his wagon was sagging. And he gave his chair to a tired old bear. And he traded the fruit flute to a bird for some fruit. And he told that old snake to go jump in the lake. And a man who bought junk bought the trunk with the skunk. And he gave the rose. To a girl he chose, while the bee on his knee flew away with a flea, and he put the shoe with the glue on you, and that silly old rat ran away with his hat, and he put his suit in the laundry chute, and the, he shrank another half, you would have a giraffe. Okay, so this poem has tons of rhythm and rhyme in it. It's really fun to tap your feet to the beat. And there are lots of places where we can look at the um, rhythm and the rhyme. So uh, what we're going to be doing the rest of the week is we're going to actually be working on our own couplet poetry. I'm going to give you another video with some more instructions about that. But I want you to think about giraffe and a half because it's going to be a great example for how you're going to write your own couplet poetry this week. Okay, thanks for reading with me. Bye-bye.